And we are live. Alexa, where the hell are we right now? <laughs> well, I tell you, Alexa, you couldn't you couldn't have pictured a more <laughs> I don't know. Texas redneck honky tonk <laughs> office in your life. We've got Texas flags in the background. We've got some kind of like Farm Bureau um, poster from 50 years ago on the wall. I got some photos that I'm going to put out on the tweets of this podcast. Uh, you guys won't believe the taping environment, but anything for soundproof noise. It, yeah, we've even got a poster of Bud uh, Spuds McKenzie right behind John yeah. here. <laughs> you know, this place is hilarious. And again, it's in the it's in the office of a honky tonk, so it doesn't get more Texas than this. No, it's pretty nice. It's John Reed. I'm with Brian Summer, the usual suspect. We are at uh, zero. We're on day two. We had a, a crazy day one here. Uh, cloud financials for the small business, uh, five about five hundred attendees, I think. Um, but the, zero, just like they say about like hair bands, zero is big overseas. Uh, but not in Japan, <laughs> but but uh, tell us a little bit about just this vendor and, and the traction they've gotten and what they're trying to do. So if you didn't know who Zero was, and that's X E R O, not Z E R O. Zero is a New Zealand uh, accounting software company uh, formed. I don't know, probably about six years ago now, and um, uh, they've got uh, a me they've got a meteoric rise kind of story on how many uh, customers they have. I think the number now is a million paying customers for their accounting solution. Um, I saw a stat just a second ago, two and a half million people are getting paid out of their payroll product alone. And for a company that basically started from nothing uh, just a few years ago, the growth has been quite astonishing. What's even more interesting, and maybe we'll get into this later on the interview, is how they come from Auckland, New Zealand, which is about as far away you can get on this planet from Silicon Valley and other major software markets and then still grow to this size. Yeah, and, and in, in New Zealand, they have huge pen market penetration, something like in the 30 a third, a third of all small businesses are engaged in their platform in some way. Yeah, they're big there and in Australia, really big right. in both. And, and I think they were saying their their conference in Melbourne was what three thousand people right. were at and, that. And they had quite a few in UK as well. I think yep. right. Yep. Um, and and Diginomica's Dennis Hallett was there. He already filed some stuff on there. So if you want to check the site, out, you can see his view from the UK. He's been tracking these folks since his, since the pre Diginomica days when he was writing about accounting software over at his Ackman Pro blog. That's mm -hmm. that's one for the old fanboys and fangirls right there. But but anyhow, um, it's a cloud financials play, which which of course is interesting in the sense that for small businesses, uh, a lot of them are not what you would call cloud savvy at this time. And, and, you know, there was some stats coming out of the UK that over there, I think almost 20% of accounts are still using a paper ledger. Um, you're talking about businesses that are, you know, challenged on all fronts to try to grow and keep up. And, and it's not just about technology. It's about a big transition accounting firms are going to have to make. But a big focus on this conference was the US market, obviously, because in the US, we have some dominant players that are household names. Um, that Zero is trying to take on or at least find market share against. So what are your thoughts? Uh, the CEO, uh, Rajuri, said that he thinks they're at a tipping point of sorts in the U.S. and they're, they're, they're about to explode and stuff. Is that the sense you get as well? Or, Well, this has been kind of um, – uh, it's been in the works for a while that they've been slowly building up a base here in North America. Uh, they've got new and additional talent and pretty senior talent on the North, on the America's part of the practice. Uh, they've got uh, more than just a beachhead now in uh, the U S they were, I think they initially opened an office somewhere in Silicon Valley a few years ago, but, um, it was mostly there to kind of support the few nascent kind of customers and activities they were doing. Now it's a completely different kind of story. And, uh, yes, they're taking on uh, Intuit uh, and other firms, QuickBooks, uh, as a product that they seem to relish deinstalling and doing ledgerectomies mm. on left and right. Um, yeah, you asked what was the most popular deinstallation, and I think it was QuickBooks. QuickBooks, yeah. Yeah. I asked that With of a With Excel panel. was a close second, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, we're talking about a, a spot in the market that uh, these are generally going to be very small firms 
that uh, they could be startups, they could be um, have outgrown their starter system, which could have just been like we were hearing. Uh, it could be the dashboard of a contractor's pickup truck is the original system that was being used. And now they've gotten a real system now. Uh, but yeah, they're, um, they're really pushing and they're trying to use the same kind of uh, almost logarithmic growth uh, mechanism they've used in other countries. They're bringing it here to the States. One thing that's interesting too is that the the cloud piece gets really intriguing for the small business because just like in the large enterprise, the platform play is a big deal, right? So they so Zero has like I think six hundred apps now on their platform, and they've got a lot of core partners like the Expensifies and the we actually use Receipt Bank and Diginomica, but it's the the notion of how you're not just moving your accounting software to the cloud, you're now able to much more easily provision all kinds of services that you might need, uh, which I think led to the CEO, Rajuri, saying that accounting as a discrete category of software eventually fades because you're just pulling these these services together. It's an interesting scenario. Yeah, when I was um, interviewing a couple of their channel partners this morning, I, uh, we kind of got on a related, you know, aspect of this very conversation and, uh, they were reporting that a lot of smaller businesses, frankly, no longer want to have a server. They don't want to have to have, uh, rely on some IT person to show up periodically to deal with their, any of their on-premise stuff. And I know we hear, we talk about that kind of stuff all the time for the mid and large size enterprises. But uh, for these smaller firms, they'd prefer to just have like a tablet or laptop connect to the um, through an Internet connection and never have another server or IT support person ever again. And you know what? For that kind of size business, that's probably not a bad way to go. And they need these additional services. The other thing I thought was interesting about the services that you're talking about, these extra partner services, they're coming from banks. Um, all kinds of payment uh, providers uh, there, you know, it works uh, any number of different mechanisms to process payments of uh, PayPal's here among others. And there were even other partners like Amazon was here with the AWS uh, gang, uh, right. you know, for the slightly bigger, I guess, kind of companies who want to move some of their operational stuff into the cloud as well. Yeah. So I think one of the, one of the things I, I was wondering about with, with was there before I got here was just what kind of customers would we be talking to here and what would their reactions be? And from what I could tell, it's a pretty passionate group of people. So they, they clearly have derived a lot from zero. It's clearly liberated them from a lot of the chores that were preventing them from doing their business. And I think that's a really common theme we're seeing at the show, which is um, how do you automate things in such a way that I can focus on value? So in other words, you can't, you, you can ignore technology, but it's coming for you either way, right? So so technology is either going to put you out of a job because y you no longer needed to just type entries into a ledger, <laughs> or you can use technology to advance your practice and turn into more of an advisor. And we had a lot of customers here. They were like 500, and the weather's been basically crap. Um, it's the worst weather you could conjure up in Austin. People don't seem dampened at all, so it's clearly working, whatever they're doing. Yeah. Well, there's two things I think jumped out at me. One is complex and involves robotic process automation. And the other one is very simple and state stating and hard to do in practice. We heard from a number of like accounting firm people who were describing their clients reactions to using the software and many of their clients, they are not accountants. They don't want to be accountants and they don't want to interact with a system that speaks to them in accounting technology terminology, right? They don't understand sub ledgers. They don't care about any of that. And it's kind of interesting. The language around the zero product is around words that people normally use. It's like, I got a check, you know, from a, a supplier and, and they know how to how it's going to get processed. It just goes in there. Now I've seen some of their competitors uh, take a more simplified approach to accounting as well, uh, but we were hearing that repeatedly uh, the last day or so here at ZeroCon. On the RPA side, this was kind of you know there was a lot of discussion from the CEO of Zero talking about how they wanted to use machine learning and artificial intelligence, but really what he's telling the audience is that. Um, they're not going to do like algorithmic stuff that uh, 
you know, is trying to derive great analytic things uh, that shine bright lights on somebody's operations. Now, these are things to like interrogate and in a crumpled up receipt and do the expense booking automatically without any other user interaction than taking a picture of it. Well, and you honed in on a buzzword. You and I are always tracking the latest buzzwords. Yeah. One of the ones here was camera first. Yeah. Which is part of that, right? Which, in other words, when they develop software here, they're thinking camera first. They want you to be able to document something, and that's the end of it. Yep. Right? Every invoice, every check you receive, every purchase order, um, everything should be, like you said, camera first. And it it could be even a, a time card, uh, an Uber you know, um, transaction. It, what, it doesn't matter what it is. And the point being that they want to take people out of the accounting work. And I thought it was really interesting uh, that that seemed to be a really big push. And they'll leave some of the more super finesse issues around accounting. Maybe it's revenue recognition issues, whatever. You leave that to a, an accountant. That is something the business doesn't need to be overly concerned with. And uh, I, I think that's a for this kind of market, for the small business market, that's the right use of more advanced technology. It's not giving them some super crazy algorithmic driven artificial intelligence uh, tool or machine learning tool that's opaque. It's not transparent. And they don't have the data scientists, whatever, on their staff, right. the math quants to figure it out anyway. So, yeah, and I talked to a, a customer slash partner yesterday, and I thought you know, even if you're listening to this and you're not really small business accounting, I think you can relate to just the impact of the technology on on how we have to think about work. Because what this guy said was, he said, when we started our firm five years ago, uh, Zero was really the only choice for for like a cloud financial system for us. So we went with that, and we thought we were just going to basically sell bookkeeping services at volume to as many clients as we could get. And we realized really quickly that that was going to be a commodity service and it was going to go away. And so we switched gears into much more of a management accounting focus where we would get our own clients to get on zero. And a lot of the bookkeeping stuff gets automated and we focus on higher value advisory and, and helping them to better understand like uh, what the issues are in their business, for example, with like, uh, why, why is this region not profitable? And we can have a discussion about that. And for a lot of these businesses, they never thought they never talked that way before, right? They're two heads down in the day to day. And I just thought it was very interesting, because he, he himself said that that's one of the big challenges is making that transition for ourselves. Like, at first, we weren't pricing that properly. And we weren't positioning those services properly. So that's what I found fascinating is that Technology sparked the change, but then you had to change your whole business model as well. Let's take it a little bit further. There was a moment in the show yesterday morning when um, one of the speakers commented about how uh, a client's accountant wanted to take them off of the cloud-based zero product and put them back on on-prem. Yeah. And the whole audience erupted with this boo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's fun, you know, but what this speaks to is you have a lot of accountants who are very comfortable with what they already know and very uncomfortable with change. Right. And that was a thematic thing that kept coming up and again and again and again. And there was even a, an accounting firm panel uh, John and I both uh, sat in on listened to. And one after another, each of the speakers had each one had left a, an old, traditional, unchanging kind of accounting firm to either set up something on their own or go in with a more uh, relevant, modern kind of firm that was pointed and looking towards the future, not looking backwards to the past. Right. And so Zero's plan to, to get f much deeper into the U.S. market, a key part of that is going to be reaching accountants. That's, that's one of their core principles is getting accountants as partners, getting accountants on their platform. Do you think that's going to work? given the stuff we just described and the challenges there? Well, uh, I've got some reservations, and I'll tell you why. I, I've done a ton of public speaking gigs in the last couple of years with any number of different accounting audiences um, in uh, the U.S., Canada, and some other countries. And uh, by and large, i got to tell you, as a group, they're not the most um, 
say, social media savvy <laughs> kind of group. They right. aren't, uh, they don't like change, uh, and they prefer that change come to them in small doses. They mm-hmm. don't go out actively looking for it. Right. And uh, Zero's going to have, Zero's going to have, I think, um, an experience where they're going to run into an awful lot of accountants who are aging out and getting ready to go into retirement. And those, they shouldn't even bother trying to convince. They need to focus on the ones that are going to be accounting firm partners, whatever, that are coming up through the ranks. That's the future for zero. 